I've just spent a few minutes hanging some of my stars up in the window because now I'm going to tackle this lot. It's filthy, horrible, horrible weather. I think I've got a cold coming on, hence the need to eat some really lovely, simple, fresh vegetables. So here are, amazingly, there's an onion, you've seen those roped up outside. The beetroot are really small, but they'll be fine. The carrots and the leeks and the cavolo nero, fantastic. And then in here, some of my potatoes. So we're going to get on and make a bit of a stew with them. In this bowl here, I've got some haricot beans that I found in the cupboard. The cupboard? When I was cleaning and tidying the cupboard and painting it. <laughs> I found these beans and they've been soaking all day long. So now what I'm going to do with them, because beans have got something of a reputation of giving people wind. Um, whether that's deserved or not. But one of the things you can do to help that not happen is to sieve the water and wash them really well so that they haven't got that soaking water um, to cook in. I'm going to cook them in fresh water. So let's make a start. Now when I'm working here, I can't wear my lapel mic because the lead's not long enough. So I either shout or I don't talk to you. We'll see how we go. So they've had a good uh, soaking now and a good rinsing. So I shall cover them with water and bring them to the boil. They don't need anything in there. Here's another tip about cooking um, peas and beans like this, the legumes, don't put any salt in at this point because the salt will make the shells harden. It prevents them from taking water on and getting soft. So put the salt in at the very end. Here's one of my leeks then. When leeks are growing, when you're growing them in the ground, they get very soily and the soil can get inside all of these spaces here. So in order to cook the leek really well without having any of that gritty soil, this is what I do. So I split it right the way up into the leaves like that. And you can see the little bits of soil. I mean, it means that it's grown in fabulous soil, but you don't want to eat that. So then I cut it into, actually let's just take the very end off because that's a bit of the root and then I'm going to cut this into chunks and some of this green at the top is absolutely fine probably up to about there so all this mud and leek then is going into a clean washing up bowl full of cold water So that's been cleaned in a couple of changes of cold water now and I can see that that's completely fine. So I'll just store those in there, tiny bit there I need to take out and then clean this down. Let's turn those beans down. I'm going to do the beetroot next. Sometimes there's some good eating in here doesn't look so great today. So here's the, they're all small. I'm going to give them a wash. Now beetroot, I'm going to boil them in a pan. Uh, and uh, I like them just like a vegetable like that, so it's soft and boiled. But if you were, to, if I was to cut, if I was to cut this close off now and cut the root off, then all the red of the beetroot would leak out into the pan. So I'm going to cook them like that. I've scrubbed off all the soil. They'll take ages, but I've got ages. So the beans are coming to the boil now. In fact, they are boiling. So I'm going to turn those right down to a simmer. So I've got some bay leaves and I'm just going to put a couple in with the boiling water. 
while those beans are boiling. It'll take about an hour. I'm going to make the vegetable stew in this pan here. I'm going to put some olive oil in there now. Onion. It's going to be a chunky stew because I can't be bothered to cut too fine. So I've got my compost bucket just beside me here and all the trimmings go in there. This is a bit of my garlic. Okay, so we'll smash that garlic up like that. I don't mind getting big chunks of garlic in something. So I hit it with the broad side of the big knife and then the papery skin comes off and in it goes. Hmm, let's see. Where, what direction are we gonna take this stew in? So at this point, while we're just at the beginning stages, and I'm just frying off the onion and the garlic, we can take this stew in many, many different directions. So I could take it off in an Indian direction, or I could take it off to the Mediterranean, depending on what I put in it now. And so looking up at my spices, it's a good place to start is with a few chilli flakes because that can go in either direction, can't it? And if I want a tomato -y stew, like chilli, what would I put in next? Well, let's just let that, let's let that do its thing while I do the carrots. Mm. These carrots, I pulled these out of my garden about an hour ago. I'm absolutely amazed. This was a third sowing of carrots. I did a sowing and I ate them. I did a second sowing and I ate them. This is the third sowing of carrots. Amazing. So let's give them a wash and a chop. I'm going to move you over here. I don't need to peel them because they are organic and fresh and yummy. I've scrubbed them really, really well. And now I'm going to cut them into cookable chunks. I don't want to waste hardly any. <laughs> and then the trick with a stew like this one is to get all the chunks around about the same size. I'm going to halve these. Carrots are ready to go in when the stew is ready. And the next thing I've got then is some of my potatoes. So I've just been out to the shed where I've got the potatoes. But I'm going to peel them because that's what kind of mood I'm in. When you cook with food from your garden, you have to kind of accept that everything's going to be really filthy <laughs> and give everything a two or three washes. So they're filthy. I'm going to give them a really good wash. I want to make these into the same size chunks as the carrots so that when you're eating it, everything's around about the same size. I'm going to take this Mediterranean, I've decided. I'm going to put some uh, a tin of tomatoes in. So now we're just letting everything cook. And these are all my cleaned vegetables, cleaned potatoes, carrots and leeks. So I'm just gonna tip them in. Just a scant teaspoon. That's all we need in there. Now this next thing I'm going to do, you can call me fussy if you like, but when you get a tin of tomatoes, I don't like the stalky bit on the top. So I'll put them in like that. We'll keep that and we'll rinse that out with some water. 
and then I find the top of the tomato and pull it off. I don't like it. I don't like finding that in my stew. So we'll get rid of that. I know it's a bit fussy, but it's a thing. See, look, you don't want to be chomping away and get that a mouthful of that, do you? Well, I don't. So it only takes a second. I'll take that bit out. Check that I've got them all. Give them a squidge up. Just run a little bit of water through there just to get that out. I'm going to run a little bit of water through here as well. So I'm going to give that a little stir, put this, the heat right up until it comes back to a simmer. Lid on, and that's fine. It's probably going to be about an hour in there, um, and then we put the beans in. Now you may remember I picked Cavallo Nero today as well, which is um, one of the um, cabbage family. Uh, but that's just a leaf that doesn't need to go in until about five minutes before the end, uh, and it'll just cook and stay lovely and bright green, which is what we want. And now we wait. That looks nice. Yep, they look cooked. And in here, a beetroot. Okay, let's get all of that lot sorted then. I'm going to fish out the bay leaves and then tip the beans in. That's what the beetroot looked like. I'll show you what I'll do with those in a minute. And I'm just going to taste it for salt and pepper. So it hasn't had any salt in. I'm going to sprinkle a bit of salt in. There we go. And some pepper. Ooh. Oh my word, that is good. And I'm going to put the lid back on. Put it on a very low heat. I forgot to show you what I do with the beetroot. So here they are, look, they're cooked, completely cooked through now. And just rub off the top, rub off the skins. They all come off really easily because they're beautifully cooked through. I just trim off the top if you think you need to, and maybe the bottom's all right, doesn't need any trimming. So the, the skins just rub off. And because we didn't cut the skins, the, the top and the tail off, they haven't gone all anemic. Well, I might as well put them all on there. I put a dollop of yoghurt in the middle because that's always nice. And that's what it looks like now.